Malfurion returned to his slightly secluded home, not far from the elven settlement of Sormar. It was a humble little place, formed from both tree and earth, a stark contrast to how a lot of other night elves lived nowadays. But as far as Malfurion was concerned, one was supposed to adapt to their surroundings, not force their surroundings to adapt to them. Probably another reason why he only had three friends, because he basically seemed like the Unabomber to most other elves. But anyway, Malfurion was still very troubled by what he'd seen in Chapter 4, within the Emerald Dream. Cenarius had attempted to try and offer an alternative perspective, lighten the mood a bit. The visions we see in the Emerald Dream, they can mean many things. Even what we think is real may not be so. The Dreamland often plays its own games in our limited minds. But deep down, Malfurion knew. What he'd seen was definitely real. There was reckless spellcasting taking place within the Palace of Ashara, with a complete disregard of the potential damage it could do to the world, and it was extremely unlikely that the Queen wasn't part of it. However, Malfurion went ahead and tried to return to his normal routine, tried to forget his troubles, but as he sat down and took a sip of honey wine, something very large seemed to move across the field of moonlight. He immediately got up, rushed to his door and opened it, but nothing. No unusual creatures. No unusual sounds. No sign of any intruder whatsoever. Just my nerves, I suppose. Meanwhile, a very confused Broxigar made his way through a forest, his head absolutely pounding. He couldn't even begin to comprehend the things he'd just seen. Swirling chaos, voices and sounds and images that made zero sense, the fact that he was now in a forest instead of a mountain pass, or even the fact that he was alive whilst his young companion had been torn apart. But Brox was a warrior, with warrior's instincts, so he decided to just go ahead and follow them. His war chief would want to know what or who was responsible for the weirdness that had just happened, because someone is usually responsible for magic stuff. So the question now was, was it an accident or was it intentional? In which case, who the bloody hell was threatening the orcs new homeland? Because they needed to die immediately. So Brox pushed forward, and after several hours of pushing forward, he stepped into a clearing to find himself face to face with a tall female figure, an elf clad in silver robes. Uh... Before Brox even had a chance to reach forward and smother the lady's face, a whole bunch of cries and shouts filled the air. And suddenly, the old orc veteran was surrounded. Now, a big part of Brox wanted to stand his ground, fight, and probably die due to being massively outnumbered, but that would also lead to him failing to complete his mission. So, Brock snarled and bloody cheesed it. Obviously, the crowd of tall lean figures gave chase, with a couple of them even overtaking the fleeing orc atop feline mounts. But Brox didn't give a shit. He simply grabbed one of the riders and tossed them directly towards the other one. However, just as Brox started to feel quite confident in the possibility of his escape, another elf appeared out of nowhere in front of him. They raised one hand to chest level, pointed a finger, and boof. The orc fell to the ground, fighting desperately to even keep his eyes open. But after a moment of processing what had just happened, that the elf had cast some kind of cheap trick magic on him, fury ignited inside the orc. A fury that gave him a little bit of a second wind. A number of elven eyebrows raised in shock as Brock started to pick himself up. But some of the elves just went ahead and repeated the finger pointy spell again. And this time, Brock's passed out. Meanwhile again, Lord Xavius was not pleased. Three nights they'd been at this, and they had absolutely nothing to show for it. We shall increase the field of power tenfold tomorrow. However, one of the other highborn sorcerers shot the Lord a quick glance. With all due respect, Lord Xavius, that risks much. Such an additional increase may well destabilize all that we've accomplished. And what exactly would that be? What have we accomplished? Why we command more power than any night elf has ever commanded before. Xavier's nodded, and then immediately frowned. Yes, and with it we can squash an insect with a mountain-sized hammer. You are a short-sighted fool. Consider yourself fortunate that we require your skills for this effort. Perithan then bowed his head and shut his goddamn mouth. Good, Xavier's thought. Not a complete idiot, then. What we seek to do, we need perfect manipulation of the will to accomplish. We preaching again, my darling Xavius. Xavius narrowed his eyes, dismissed his fellow spellcasters, 
and then turned to address the one person in this place who did not rightly show him the respect he deserved. Light of the moon, I preach only of your purity, your flawlessness. I simply remind them of their duty, nay, their love for you. They should not therefore wish to fail, for they would be failing you as well, my darling counsellor, and I think they fear that more than they love me. Hardly, my mistress. Xavius then invited the Queen to observe the project, the thing they'd been working on, and so she and Xavius shifted their gaze towards the glowing circle. It was hypnotic. Xavius had spent long hours staring deep into this creation. Sometimes, if he really squinted, he swore he could see, Lord Xavius, I believe you're not listening to me. <clears throat> My apologies, Daughter of the Moon. You were saying, surely we must soon triumph. Surely soon we will have the power to cleanse our land of its imperfection, create the perfect paradise. Indeed, my queen. We are but a short time from the creation of a grand golden age. Your realm will be purified. The world will know everlasting glory, and the blighted impure races will cease to be. Ashara smiled. I'm glad to hear that it will be soon. More petitioners came today, Lord Counselor. They came in fear of the violence in and around the Great Well. They asked me for guidance as to its cause. Naturally, I referred their requests to you. Rightly so, mistress. I will calm their fears long enough for our precious task to come to fruition. After that, it will be your pleasure to announce what has been done for the good of your people. And they shall love me the more for it. If they could possibly love you more than they already do, my glorious queen. Ashara accepted the compliment. I will make the wondrous announcement soon, Lord Xavius. See to it that all is ready when I do. And then she buggered off. And as soon as she left the room, Xavius visibly deflated, with his expression dropping to bitchy resting face. If I am not alerted before the next time our majesty decides to join us, it will be your head. Is that understood? Yes, my lord. I also expect to be notified of Captain Varathin's arrival before the Queen. We need not sully her hands with this task. Make certain that he, and whatever he brings with him, is led directly to me. Yes, my lord. Xavius waved his hand dismissively, and the guard rushed off. And finally, the Lord Counselor was alone. And what better thing to do than turn and stare at the magical energy again? Fascinating. He then took several steps towards it, feeling the intense emanations admiring the sheer potential, drinking in the fantastic sight, when suddenly... I have searched long for you, and now you've come to me. 